Hello and welcome to episode three of the Geek Heart Games podcast. I am Sam Suvak alongside Cody Tietrich. Bonjour. Hola. <laughs> That's all I got. I'm not very... Um, I think not maybe... A lot of Maybe Guten Tag is, um, I don't know if that's a hello or like a good day, maybe. It could be a goodbye. I don't know. I think it may be goodbye. Well, the mutt's in the podcast right here. I already said goodbye. Okay. All right. Good episode, was, man. Good, great. Ooh. All right. See you guys later. <laughs> All right. But uh, let's not do that because it's, it's been a rough week. It's been a long week. I'm exhausted, but I'm excited to get to talk about some video games. This is going to be great. Um, but before we get into that, Cody, you've had some excitement this week, I would say. Um, you I, you started down a path from which there's <laughs> no return that's going to change your life forever, I would say. Um, so do you want to tell us about that? Uh, yeah, so this past Sunday, I got my very first tattoo. Um, it is of the Jason Voorhees mask. From Friday Thirteenth Part Four, um, the final chapter. Uh, it's healing right now. There's pictures on Twitter that look a lot better. We'll have another picture going <laughs> up to accompany that. Um, right now, it's going through some things and it's a little annoying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm already like excited for the next one. Already thinking, scheming. Um, okay. Same. Wait. Let's let's go back. Wait, wait, wait. So why part four, Jason Mask? Um, I really just like the aesthetic of it. Um, it's also one of my favorite Friday Thirteenth movies. Okay. Uh, but I think the gash in the forehead area mm -hmm. is really cool looking on it. So I just kind of went with a really cool design. Uh, I, I say it looked really cool like he did good texturing and like making it look like dirty and like an old mask like like an yeah. actual it's not it's not like a it's not clean new clip arty it's it's like it's rugged it's real life it looks bloody and like you did not want to see that when you're walking through the woods <laughs> so i think he did a great job yeah uh, um he did an amazing job uh it was one of the coolest experiences i've ever had um for those of you who don't know, I collect Funko Pops. Um, I know some people hate them, but I'm a personal fan. I have like over 100. Uh, so I got there, and he was like, he got the stencil done, and then he was like measuring on my forearm. Uh, and he's like, all right, come back to my plate, and we come back to where uh, we're going to do it. And I walked around the corner. Oh, wait, 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 and... wait, 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 wait. I'm too late for it, but I'm still going to say that's what she said. For the oh come back gosh. to where we're gonna do it line i was too late i'm sorry okay keep going keep going uh i walk around the corner and floor to ceiling he just has funko pops of all kinds of different kinds he has a lot of horror ones up there and i was like this is my heaven like i love this <laughs> so much um and then along with that they were also doing a quote-unquote movie night and we watched pretty much all of Friday the 13th part four while I got the part four tattoo. And then we started part five and it was just super awesome and like set the mood and it was just super badass. And I loved every second of it. Did he, yeah, I'm pick, really happy with it. did he pick part four to watch because he knew that the mask was from part four or was it coincidental? I think it was coincidental that that's just the time I came in. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Because when I walked in, I noticed they were watching part three and I was like, Oh, that's cool. They're probably gonna put something else on, and he's like, "No, nah, we got the entire like collection, so we're just <laughs> watching them all." And I was like, "Oh, cool, that's awesome." Um, but Sam, do you have any tattoos? I do have a tattoo. I oh. have a small one on my leg. It's uh, a Japanese kanji for the word happiness. Um, mm. And here's the thing, Cody. I I never wanted a tattoo. I'm like, no, no, I don't like pain. I don't want to be permanently marked. I'm not interested in this at all. Um, but then I had this friend, my best friend, Randy. We worked together for many years. We would always hang out together. He, he really helped me grow into the person that I am today. Um, so he was just like, you know, he means a lot to me. Uh, he was going to move to Dallas. 
and I was kidding with him because neither of us ever wanted a tattoo. And I was like, well, if you, because he'd been temporarily doing some stuff in Dallas for work. I was like, if you end up moving there permanently, we should get matching tattoos. And I was kidding because obviously I didn't want a tattoo, but he was like, yeah. no, yeah, I'd do that. And I was like, well, well, shit. Okay. So I guess we're getting <laughs> tattoos. So we got matching tattoos. Um, and uh, I don't know about you, Cody. You're probably a tougher person than I am, but fuck, getting a tattoo hurts. Oh my God, that hurts so bad. I mean, I could handle it. I wasn't like screaming or crying, but I was just like, oh my God, this is so painful. It <laughs> Where felt like on some... your leg did you get it? Uh, a little bit above my ankle. So it was in a fleshy spot. I mean, it wasn't like on bone. My yeah. Randy, he decided to get it like a tramp stamp on his back. It was like right on his spine. Oh. He was even in worse pain. Um, but seriously, it feels like someone has a piece of broken glass and they're just like dragging it along your flesh. That's how it felt to me. Um, what did you think? Um, so my guy was really cool. He kept putting some like numbing stuff on it uh, as he went through. But like um, a little bit of backstory to who I am. I was very sick as a kid. So I've had needles in, in and out of my arms and IVs in and out of my arms all my life. So when he first did it, I was like, oh, this just feels like I'm getting blood taken. Mm -hmm. And... I, it didn't hurt that bad. I'm sure oh, the numbing stuff you, helped. Cody, just fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then like when it was swelling after he was going back and doing like some touch ups, uh, like with color, yeah. he sprayed some more stuff on it to numb it. So it didn't really hurt that much. That's but funny. I know for the next one, I'm gonna try and do none of the numbing stuff. So maybe it will end up hurting like a motherfucker, according <laughs> to you, Sam. <laughs> And yours is pretty big. Like, how how big would you say yours is? Uh, it covers. If we're gonna go like a hundred percent, it covers probably about like eighty percent of my forearm. Um, across. Okay, but I mean, forearms so, are different sizes. How I mean, your you know, forearm is different than my forearm. Um, it's about the size of a potato. Come on, Cody. Potatoes are different sizes. What are you, it's, what are you doing here? Do, like, a, is it six inches? Is it ten inches? Is it the size of a cell phone? Okay. All right. um, yeah, like an old Nokia phone. That's how long it would be. Okay. And then I mean, across... There's lots of different Nokia phones, but we'll just okay, let it you go. Know, the we'll old let bricks. It go. The br okay, <laughs> you know what? This segment's not working. It's, um, it's big. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It's a pretty sizable tattoo. And he <laughs> even was like, oh, like most people would not do something this A, big or detailed yeah. for their first tattoo. Like, so that's why he did so much of the numbing stuff. All right. Um, Mine is like an inch and a half, maybe. It's it's not big. And it's just plain black. Um, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> very nice i approve all this segment was about was getting that's what she said jokes made. <laughs> that was the whole um, reason you got the tattoo was so that we would be able to get some that's what she said jokes in here so so thank you for taking one for the team uh yeah i don't know i know some people are gonna be like well why why jason Voorhees mask like what if you don't like jason Voorhees in some number of years it's not just about the movies it's about the video game uh, Friday the 13th game because I've made some long lasting friendships through that. We've had some of the best moments. Sam and I did a role play stream oh God, where I we pretend to be characters, and that goes down as one of my favorite gaming uh, memories. Um, and I love Friday the 13th movies, like, I've loved them my entire life. So, this is just so if you ever see me in real life, do not be afraid because I have a Jason Voorhees ta a tattoo. I'm actually a really nice guy. So yeah. He is. And I mean, I think that's a lot about when you get a tattoo like that. It's about cementing a point in time and recording your feelings and what it meant to you. And like things might not always be the same in the future, but you look at it and you remind yourself of, of what it was at that time. So at least that's what it is for me too. So, so yeah. Yeah. So every, like in 20 years, I'll look down at this and be like, remember that time you killed eight counselors on Friday the 13th? Good times. Good times. Good times. All right, so wait, were you going to tell me, like, your plans? Because this is not your one and only. Unlike me, you, uh, you're getting more. Um, so, yeah, I do have a couple different ideas. Um, 
I think my right arm is going to be like pop culture stuff that like means a lot to me. Um, while my left arm will eventually become my video game arm. I have some Overwatch tattoo ideas in mind. Um, Sam and I did a video series called Heroes Hideout. Um, it was based on Marvel Heroes Omega, RIP. Um, <laughs> I have a design in mind for that. There's just a, uh, there's got a war that means a lot to me. Just oh my god, Halo can I well. can I spoil it possibly? Yeah, I, go for it. I don't know. I don't remember if we've talked about this, but for your Marvel Heroes tattoo idea, is it going to be a Captain America shield with a squirrel in the middle of it? close it was gonna be a <laughs> captain america shield leaning against a giant acorn because oh, in that game i like it i played captain america and sam played squirrel girl yes um, that's, and awesome. that's how we did our series so yeah but that's another like memory so i definitely want that on me eventually um i think closer to that like what i want to do next i need to get my arms cleared up i have like some weird arm acne gross i know um but i'd like to my next one to be like on my other arm uh and i want to get the symbol for the dragon zord from power rangers okay. um and it's like a kind of like a footprint almost but it looks, it looks really cool and i love the green ranger from power rangers so that's probably the next um tattoo i'll be getting that's cool yeah but yeah lots of uh it's funny, my girlfriend was telling me today how people always say, like, oh, your boyfriend seems like someone who would have a lot of tattoos. I don't really know what that <laughs> says about me as a human being, but huh. I'm glad I can fulfill their wishes. Yeah, so. you're starting to live up to your reputation. So Yeah. <laughs> but enough about tattoos. Let's get All to right. what we were really supposed to be doing some here. some video games. Um, do you want to start by talking about the Terra beta that we got to participate in this last weekend? Yes. Um, so Terra is an MMORPG. Uh, our friend Byron, aka Groon, was talking about it. So I was like, yeah, I mean, I love MMORPGs, World of Warcraft, my jam. We played Marvel Heroes, which is in still my opinion, an MMORPG. It just plays like Diablo. Um, and yeah, I really like MMORPGs. I didn't really get very far in this beta. That's the <laughs> weird thing is like, they're just running be like beta weekends, I guess, mm -hmm. until the game goes live. Um, I spent this last beta trying out the different classes because there's a bunch of them and some of them mm -hmm. I don't enjoy. I think I really ended up falling in love with it's the female human only class called the brawler because you can like do attacks but you also do counter attacks and when you hit like a perfect counter attack you do like some super badass moves and you have like fist weapons that are like lion's heads and they look Ooh. so awesome That's um, cool. there was a lot of like crashes and like the game messing up oh, i know they're testing out servers obviously well uh, yeah i crashed like probably about 10 times altogether the entire weekend. Like, I wanted to spend a lot of time in it. Like, I wanted to find out what class I wanted to play because I do want to give this game a shot once it comes out. Um, but I crashed about 10 times. Just small things like, oh, I couldn't couldn't pick up an object, so I just had to reset the game. Um, or I would just be walking, and the next thing I know, it's like, nope, crash, blue screen. <laughs> uh, it definitely reminds me of Neverwinter. Uh, the Dungeons and Dragons uh, MMO. Um, it kind of feels like that. The movement feels kind of similar. Uh, the only thing I will say about Neverwinter is it's a little bit better about what their female characters wear, I feel. Because <laughs> this is very, like, anime where, like, the women have huge tits and are yeah. all wearing thongs when they're in male armor and it makes no sense. Uh, like, I was showing my brother-in-law the human female brawler class and the promo art was this woman with giant lion's head for fist weapons and she was wearing a thong and it's like these don't add up <laughs> at all yeah um, i i didn't notice that as much because i only made one character and it was the little animal character that you could make 
I forgot. Oh, that was so cool. I forgot you what they're called. Little... They're fucking adorable, though. Yeah, I don't remember what they're called, but they're like, you can be a tiny panda bear, a tiny fox, a tiny dog. It was so fucking cool. They were adorable. Um, um, yeah. So I, I picked one of those, and I think I was like, I think I picked like the healer. Oh, I did the, the priest, because that was like the easy healer class. Because I was like, oh, maybe at some point we'll all get together and play together. Um, that didn't happen. But uh, I played for maybe 20, 25 minutes, and then I stopped. I did not get into this game at all. Um, my first problem, which was entirely my fault, is I didn't like the voice that I gave my little character. And I mean, he wasn't really talking, but he's just doing these little grunts, and it got so annoying. I was like, I fucking hate these grunts, and like, I couldn't find a way to change it. But I was like, I don't want to go make a whole other character. And then you start, and you're doing just the basic training stuff, and you're having to do these quests, and there are these stupid little, like, every two steps you complete a part of the quest and get a new one. And then you have to go talk to this little girl, and she has a high pitched voice, and it was oh, really God, annoying. Oh God, it was so bad. This little girl was like screaming in your yes. ears, and I was like, "Nah, man, sound off." Mm -mm. So that made me mad. And then when I was doing my combat, like I had this little dodge roll that I could do, and I mean it would have to recharge, but that was fine. It recharged very fast. But even when it was fully charged, it felt like a lot of times the controls were not very responsive. And it was charged, and I was pushing the button, but it wouldn't do it. And I'd have to, like, push it again. Yeah. And that was frustrating. And then I just, I mean, I played a little bit more, but I was just like, I don't care. I'm, and it made me miss Neverwinter. And I was <laughs> like, I could just go play that. And I feel bad, um, because I know I didn't give it a whole lot of time to try it out. But it just, it just didn't grab me. I don't know. Yeah, I think definitely uh, sometimes, like, I would press buttons and nothing would happen. Um, yeah. I definitely, like, think that comes down to, like, they're obviously testing the servers and there's going to be some lag, so there's probably some lag there. Uh, I think the main reason I would enjoy playing it is, I think the issue with Neverwinter was we joined so late and we were so far behind. So, like, everyone had done, like, all this cool stuff and, like, we were just like, oh, hey, we can go fight that tree monster that's cool um oh everyone else is fighting dragons darn uh so i, still I, I had was fun with us doing our I, I, I did too i did too um so i was like oh like a new mmo that we can like start everyone can start together our group of geek heart gamers as we're calling them mm -hmm. um and like we could make it like a guild or clan whatever it's called in that game and We'd have people from the start, and it'd be a brand new thing we could all do together. So that's my reason I want to like try it out once it. I'm just, I just don't care about doing the betas at this point. I, I just want to play the game when it comes out, see how it feels. Um. But yeah, I definitely got some Neverwinter vibes, mm -hmm. and I was just like, could just go play my cleric. Just, could go play Neverwinter some more. That yeah. was a fun game. I still have my guard Drake that was like that giant lizard mount that i got to write i love that oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that thing was awesome i spent 35 bucks on that thing and i still say it's a good investment probably go play it never winter sometime you should do that um so overall i like the terra beta it showed <laughs> me a new thing it's gonna be a wait and see because like i don't know if i'm gonna invest all my time into it and what about you sam well, I just gave the thumbs down sign because I didn't really care for it. But if everyone else is playing it, I'll probably play it because, you know, I like to play with people. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Um, Cody, are you ready for like a really, really long monologue where I just go on and on and never shut up? Um, should I grab a pillow and a blanket? You might uh, want I'm to. Just kidding. This could go uh, on for a while. Um, right. because Let me hear it. We haven't. I haven't told you about this at all, so you don't even know what to expect. But I played. It's called Zero Escape Zero Time Dilemma, and I have so much to say, Cody. Oh my god! 
okay. really scared. You're like, oh my god, I was. Oh, I love, I love this game. That's that's oh, okay. the short of it. I fucking loved this game. Um, apparently, it's part of a series, which I didn't know. I'd never played any of them. I'd read a summary of it, and it was like kind of like a saw movie premise where people are thrown together and have to it's like horror stuff um okay. have to play these games um but also puzzles and so i was like eh, i'm probably not gonna like it because you know puzzles meh. um but i put it on my game fly queue i ended up getting it this week and i start playing and it starts out there are these nine people they're locked in cells they have these weird bracelets on their arms they don't have any memory of how they got there and then this guy with, like, one of those creepy plague doctor masks that have, like, the kind of beak, you know what I'm talking about? He, yeah. he comes down the hall, and he, he has that saw-like voice where he's got, like, you know, a scrambler. And he's telling them this weird stuff about how lives can change in an instant. Nothing is fair, like... A snail walking down one, or not walking, snails don't walk, but like a snail being on a path can result in like so many people dying and all of this. And I'm like, okay, he's being real dramatic. Um, and so... A, a tad bit, a tad yeah, bit. Yeah, And so he's like, you guys are here, you got to play this game. Um, your lives hang in the balance, my lives hang in the balance, six billion people's lives hang in the balance. And I'm like, what the fuck? And basically, this first game is just a flip of the coin, and you get to pick. If it's if it's heads, you guys get to leave, and you're free. If it's tails, then six people have to die before anyone can escape. So it's like, okay, this is this is weird. So I'm like, if if I make the right choice, is like, do I really get to go? Um, so I just you know make a guess. I'm like, this is. You can pick like which side of the coin it's going to be. I'm like, okay, I made my guess. Uh, it was the right guess. I was like, he's like, okay, you guys got it. Uh, credits roll, game over. I'm like, huh, this is weird. Okay, so the credits rolling, I can push the back button. It goes back to this little flow chart. We can kind of see the scene and like, here's where a decision would be made. And so you can go back and reload to make the decision again. Because obviously, I mean, yeah, that's the happy ending. We got away, great, but I want to see what happens. Uh, so I go back and reload it, make the bad decision, and he's like, okay, well, bad decision. You guys are going to have to play my other game now. Uh, six of you are going to have to die. And so then it loads a new thing, and uh, they're divided into three teams, three people on each team, and they're all locked in, like, separate rooms. And they get to vote on which team they want to kill. Um, I know, right? and so they're trying what is this game it's fan oh my god it just gets better cody wait for it um so they're making plans they're like well if everyone votes for somebody else because it's whoever gets two votes for them dies so like if everybody votes for a different team everyone will survive so they're like making their plans um at some point this little dog comes in his name is gab he's like probably like eight or ten pounds he's got that that fur down in front of his eyes so you can't see his eyes he's real cute um oh and i forgot to tell you so this this style of the art is kind of like tales from the borderlands um so it's just like you know a little drawn not a whole lot of animation going on here so this dog like walks real slow and i'm guessing part of it is just the animation part of it he's supposed to be an old dog um, but he can go through the vents and, like, deliver messages to the other teams because this is so weird. This little dog, this tiny little dog, has one of those, like, little barrels on his uh, collar, yeah. like a St. Um. Mark would have. And I guess he used to carry medicine for someone, but now the medicine's gone, and so they, like, put messages back and forth. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I forgot something important. At first, you didn't know who these people were, but eventually you find out they had signed up to be part of an experiment to study people who would be um, living on Mars. So they were locked in the desert together for like five days or something. So that's how these people came together. But something happened and they got pulled out of that experiment and put into this thing, right? Okay. So, All right, time, time out, time yeah, out. Yeah, okay, okay. I know, it's getting crazy. Uh, two, two questions. Okay. One's a very serious one. One's like a... Okay. You know. 
what is this a single player or a multiplayer game single player okay so you're just controlling one you... person the rest are ai at a time. Making your... yes so like okay. you pick like i want to start with uh team c and so i make decisions and then i can reload it and play as team d and make decisions for them so in each okay. each team has a leader and you control that person's decisions so all right uh second question yeah how much acid did you drop before possibly playing this game because holy shit I, there is a lot going you on. You need to ask the developers what they were doing, okay? Because they're the ones who got so crazy. But uh, let me t uh, let me check my notes. I took notes because I was like, I need to make sure. <laughs> you, you might want to. Everything. This sounds very oh complicated. Goodness, I forgot something really important. So one of the people that's locked up is this little kid, and he has this big ball helmet on his head um that like they can't get off it's got like this code on the side you could enter a code to get it off but you can't get it off so he's stuck here with this helmet on his head nobody knows where this kid came from um he's weird that kid's gonna murder somebody <laughs> okay. i don't even trust a dog at this point oh my god gab is such a cute dog i love him okay um okay so basically what happens is you know you make your decisions you could kill people you could not kill people um the decisions you make create alternate realities. And so that's basically what's happening. So once you finish a section, you go back to this loading screen, you pick which team you want, you open them up and they've got different um, scenes that you can go click into and each scene will have a flow chart of what happens and if there's like a, if there's a decision in it or not. And so you unlock the first one and you go look at your fragments and there'll be like three or four different fragments. But I mean, there's no order, you don't know what the right way to do it is. You don't know when these things happen, if they happen at the same time, but they're different realities of occurring at the same time. So you just kind of jump in there and play it and just figure stuff out. And sometimes something will happen and you'll be like, okay, I don't understand what that's about, but then later you'll play another fragment and it'll explain something you needed to know when you saw that first fragment. So it's very interesting way of storytelling. Cody, it's something. There, there's time travel as well as the alternate realities, but not only is there just time travel, there's like two different kinds of time travel. <laughs> of course, because there is. just one would be too easy. So there's time travel. There's alternate realities. There's this story that just comes in pieces. Um, I'm loving it. I'm like, this is fantastic. Like, I don't know why. Hey, I thought there would be puzzles in this game. This is this is just like a visual novel, and it's it's if it keeps going at this pace, this could be like one of my favorite games of the year, even though it's not a new release. Um, so I'm going about an hour and a half into it, I get to a fucking puzzle, Cody. Um, so it's got these escape room type of puzzles, where your team is locked in a room, you have to go around figure stuff out to find the way to get yourself out of these rooms and they fucking suck cody um i hate puzzles um puzzles can suck it in my opinion because i mean they're just oh i do not it just doesn't I, I went through the first one and i looked everywhere in the room and like i could see okay this thing is eventually gonna have to go here but i can't get it yet i don't know and like i couldn't figure anything out so then i had to go get online look through the walkthrough it's like hey, you have to get the fireplace poker to start this so i was like whatever walkthroughs open i'm just going through it so every puzzle room i just followed the walkthroughs um but it still takes like 10 or 15 minutes to get through them because they're so involved so that's like my least favorite part like i love this game so much but then like i have this little bead of hatred for it as well because of these puzzles but i mean obviously that's what the game's about so that's my fault it's fine i will say if you like puzzles you'll probably love this game because they're i mean they're really good puzzles i just don't like doing that but they're like they're very good they get you like thinking in ways that i wouldn't normally think wait you want to say something so Pretty much after the like t hour and fifteen minute acid trip, you eventually this game just becomes an escape room generator. Because I love escape rooms, like escape rooms are my jam. Like I can suffer through the hour and fifteen minute acid trip oh, if I get to play escape there, rooms. 
there's so much visual novel part. I would say probably 80% of the game is spent like watching these cutscenes and seeing the story. Only about 20% is in the escape room oh, puzzles. Darn. But but this story is fantastic and it's so worth it. So I don't know. Um, let me see what else. Okay. Um, I like to imagine. So for the video or for the audio people, Sam is looking over at a notebook. I like to imagine Sam dropped acid when playing this game and just scrawled on a notebook like a mad person. There's not even coherent <laughs> sentences. There's just pictures of cats <laughs> over and over. Can you see it? There's like it's, it's legible. It's fine. It's okay. not quite right. bullet points, but she, it's there. She went back after she beat the game and it's good. made okay. it look nice. All right. Important things here. <laughs> This okay, Zero is the guy in the Plague Doctor mask. And so after every choice, after you do stuff, he'll come on and tell you something. Um, if you've done bad and he's not happy with you, he tells you that you're gonna get injected with the bracelet that you have on. Uh, you'll fall asleep, you'll forget the last 90 minutes that happened. Okay. If you do well, which means if you chose to kill somebody, um, you'll go to sleep, but when you wake up, you'll still have your memories because he wants you to remember that you killed those people and think about that. Okay, um, he tells a story throughout the game. It kind of progresses. You get more and more of it as the story goes. It involves that fucking snail from the beginning, okay? And how some stuff happened. And at, for the first few times you're hearing stuff, you still think he's just like being philosophical and talking about stuff. But then you find out that really some stuff happened and that stuff affected some of the people that are here. And so getting to find out what that story meant and how some of these people were affected by that, also seeing some interpersonal relationships, it is so good. It is so satisfying. Um, oh my God, what, did you want to say something? You had this like look um, on your face. Are you just, still just like blown away by, by all this? This has been a roller coaster of a story. Uh, oh my God. Um, there's a snail, there's like a man named Zero. Yes. Dying. There's roofies involved, apparently. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Escape room. Just wow. Okay. So what is, this is, what is the name of this game for our listeners one more time? Zero Escape, colon, Zero Time Dilemma. Um, and so you go through all this. On the save screen, you'll see there are six slots. So every time you get like a final ending, a little icon will show up so you can see like how many endings you've got. There are six different endings. Some of them are kind of specific to just one team. There are kind of two that I would say are like big endings. And the thing with a game like this, it's trying for something real serious. It's got a lot going on. It's got a lot of mystery. You can can it that. stick the landing? Can it pull it all together? Can it give you a satisfying ending? And the answer, Cody, is yes. Yes, sir. It gave me actually two incredibly satisfying endings. Um, one just kind of sh shows you some of the stuff that could happen. And I was like, that's... At first, I thought that was going to be like the real ending. Um, but then I got to a different ending, and this time when the credits rolled on that one, you were not able to go back. You had to sit and watch the credits. So that's like, oh, okay, so that is the real true ending. Um, but it was so good, so satisfying. It, Oh my god, I loved it. And I just was thinking about stuff, you know, to make sure I had it all in my head. And then at the end, I was like, I want to go back and listen to that story that he told. Um, just to make sure I'm not missing anything, but I couldn't figure out. There were so many scenes to pick. I was like, I can't find the right one. So I decided to go online and just see if I could find it. And I found this Reddit post where this guy was just kind of recapping everything. And I was so glad that I read that because he pointed something out that I hadn't caught and I like hadn't made a connection. And I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense also now. So it's like there are so many layers to this game and the reveals and finding stuff out in just the right way is great. Um, I Spoiler alert, I got the platinum in it because, I mean, it's not hard. Of you just course. Have to, you just of have course. to finish stuff. Um, I, and, like, I'd gone through and I thought there was, like, this real important, like, secret thing that I hadn't unlocked yet. And I'm like, why isn't this unlocked? 
And so I went back through my flow chart to see what was missing. And apparently this really early decision um, that I should have made, I didn't do it the right way because you had to do something in a certain order. So this thing should have been unlocked a long time ago, like way from the beginning. And it was actually the last thing that I did. Um, but I actually, I love that it was the last thing that I did because it was a part about Zero and more about who he was and some of his motivations. And getting that to be my final segment was like, oh, it, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, Cody. This game got me choked up like a couple of times. It was like emotional. Um, so, I mean, just all around, it is such a good game. I love it. Um, what else did I have? Oh, one thing. So I told you that the animation style is not, you know, they're not trying for anything fancy. Like these characters, like they barely move. If there's going to be like some type of big action, they'll like cut away to like the wall or the ceiling and then cut back after the action's done just to like not have the animation. Um, but the one thing that pissed me off that was like super animated, there's this one character, her name is Mira. She's like the sexy character. And she's wearing like a hoodie that's pretty much unzipped to her navel. She's got big boobs hanging out here. So she's got this bra that you can see and these boobs. Every time she moves the least tiniest bit, those boobs jiggle, Cody. They spent all of their animation time making the boobs jiggle. And I'm like, what the fuck? Did that, why did you have to do that? Like, I don't even... Like, that's... why? It's so stupid. Very like, odd choice. Um... Yes. And I'm just like, this is... Ugh. So that's that's a complaint. The puzzles are a complaint, but that's my own personal problem with puzzles. But overall, this game is so good. I love it. Um, just this type of storytelling, just like I, it gets me. I love it. Um, so I highly recommend it. That was a that was a roller coaster. I I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> I was. Straight up expecting you at the end to tell me how you got like an M. Night Shyamalan twist of an ending, but I'm glad you got two good endings. Well, wait, I, I mean, M. Night like Shyamalan has made some good this. endings. I need to see this game. I need to like play it just so I can understand. Because mm -hmm. everything you told me just bonkers. And I can't Completely. even tell you like the really good stuff because I can't spoil it. Um, but it well, is so good. So if anyone out there is listening who has played this game, um like shoot me a note so we can just like talk about it because that would be fantastic like i would love to just talk to somebody about this game because it's so good okay all right all right so i'm sorry i told you i was gonna go on and on and i was true to my I... word so there you I'm go i'm glad you enjoyed it all right cody tell me about some other games let's uh do something else um... here so the other day, I babysitted my niece, um, and she has a Nintendo Switch she got for her birthday, so I got to try something I have never tried before. Mario Odyssey Co-op. Oh. Now, I have played Mario Odyssey. I've beaten the kind of main story part. I haven't done any of the extra stuff. I don't know. I think I'm at like 400-something moons, maybe. Uh, it's been a while since i played Mario. Uh, let me just say... I love Mario Odyssey. One of my favorite games from last year. Mario Odyssey with a 10-year-old who would think it's hilarious to throw you off of cliffs. <laughs> not as fun. Not as fun as all. Well. Like, was not, not having fun with it. Um, yeah, and I also, mean, your niece sounds pretty fun to me. Oh, yeah, she's a blast. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love my niece. Uh... The camera angle they give you, because, so, the way the co-op works is one person controls Mario, and one person controls Cappy. And Cappy can fly, like, around a lot. <laughs> like, a lot more than you can just playing a single player and throwing him. Like, she was, like, just going for stuff. I was like, oh, cool, whatever, man, do your thing. Wait, was she playing but as Cappy, or were you? She was playing as Cappy. Okay. Um, so how was, how was we, Cappy we throwing you off the cliff? Okay. Yeah, we alternated at some points. Um, so as Cappy, you can like suck Mario up and make him do a jump. Um, there's a that's what she said joke in there somewhere. I, yeah, I know. know. I was like, like I don't, I don't know. What um, say it. <laughs> so yeah, as Cappy, you can like suck Mario up 
and that makes him do a jump. Uh, hand motions for you video people. Check it out. Uh, so you suck him up real good, just right there. Um, and he jumps really high. But, like, it's un- an uncontrollable jump where you're just fucking flip-flopping around, and it's not fun when she's, like, throwing me off cliffs. But, so anyways, the camera angle is at a re- really <laughs> weird... sorry, I can't stop laughing. <laughs> oh, get your mind out of the gutter, Sam. Um, the camera angle was really weird, because I guess you have to be able to, like, see where Cappy is going at all times, just in case, you know, because okay. I don't know if Cappy can hit something bad and take damage. Hmm. Uh, so, like, I just kept falling all the time. Like, not because she was jumping, just so, like, I would go to do a jump and I couldn't see where mm. I was going because mm-hmm. of the camera angle. Yeah. And I just fall to my death. Um, so, like, I, and I don't know if there was a way to fix it. We didn't play for that long. Uh, but we got, we did do a boss battle. Yeah. Um, it's, it was in the desert planet mm-hmm. uh, i can't remember the name off the top of my head and let me tell you having co-op for that so much way <laughs> yeah single player because minor spoilers for mario um that boss drops bombs and you need to hit the bomb back at the boss mm-hmm. to damage her and then you need to jump over her head cappy just Makes it a cakewalk. Like, all I had to do was jump on the head. Yeah. And, like... That's what she said. Oh. God damn it. I knew it was coming. The second <laughs> the words left my mouth, I was like, ah, uh, fuck. Um, but yeah, and, like, it was cool to play Mario again. Because, like, it's been probably about a month since I've, like, really hopped in and did anything. I haven't really tried out the Balloon World update. I don't um, even know what that is. They added a, like, DLC where Luigi is around now, and you can hide balloons, and, like, it's, like, an online competitive thing where, like, you can join your friends' worlds and go find their balloons. And, like, there's, like, it's time. I don't really know what you get for being good at it, but it seems cool. Do you have to have beat the game to do that? I don't think so. I I think he's just around. I don't think there was, like, any caveat to it. It was just, hey, go find balloons. Um, but yeah, so it was cool to play Mario again. Uh, one of my favorite games from last year. But yeah. All right, real quick. Um, why don't you also tell me about your niece and Splatoon? Oh my god! <laughs> so my niece is playing Splatoon too, and she's just a beast. <laughs> like within the first minute of the game starting, she gets a triple kill. Like she's like doing combat roles she's just wiping the floor with these people and still playing the objective well tell us how like, she's doing it so she's like oh do you want to play uncle cody and i'm like yeah so i started running and then i notice i'm looking at the ground and i'm like what's wrong with your camera like is it like do you have this the sticks like the wrong way like oh i guess i'm like moving the sticks the wrong way she goes, no, I'm using the motion controls. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I get like I get like seasick almost from this. I'm like, oh, mm-mm, no, mm-mm, not today. <laughs> she, like, I guess this is just how, because they're on from the start. I remember turning them off. Yeah. And just because I just didn't enjoy playing like that. I have read that if you want to be like a pro at Splatoon 2, that's the best way to play because you have better like aim with it. Yeah, as your niece can contest. Yeah. yeah. She has just mastered this. She's <laughs> wiping the floor of people. Like, she doesn't even use grenades. She's like, why do I need to use grenades? I'm just really good at shooting people. And I'm like, I freaking love you. Like, <laughs> you're so good. She's like, oh, can we play against each other? And I was like, no. I don't want to. You're going to murder me. Um. So, yeah, she's killing it as Splatoon. And then she's like, I got to go do my job. And I'm like, what? And she's doing something called Salmon Run. I had I had Splatoon for like six months. Never knew what Salmon Run was until she showed me. <laughs> it's like a horde mode or something. I don't yeah. know. It was cool. <laughs> so babysitting my niece showed me a lot of cool things on the Switch I never knew about. That's awesome, man. And uh, apparently being a kick-ass gamer runs in the T-Trick family. Apparently. She could be a and pro gamer. She did listen to our first podcast, so she does get around to this one. All right. 
apologize for the language. Oh, oh gosh, yeah. Oh dear, that's that's unfortunate. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I feel so ashamed right now. Yeah, earlier last night, I guess I saw a Facebook post. My mom watched one of my videos and called me out on my language. So, I'm oh, you were swearing a lot. Like, yeah, mm. watch that. Mm. All right, keep going, Cody. Oh, that's right. Um, forgot that I played all the video games on this podcast. I just played. One I was game making sure we had and content. I played it a lot. Oh my god, that game was um, like twenty hours long, and I played all of it. <laughs> so, as far as the PS Plus games this month, we got Bloodborne and Ratchet and Clank. I've never played a Ratchet and Clank game, so I was like, well, I want to try something new. Um, just as you know, something to break up the constant Fortnite and Monster Hunter. Like, just wanted something new to play. So I don't know Ratchet and Clank. Played about the first hour of it. And decided it was not for me. Um, <laughs> I did not enjoy the way the shooting feels in that game. Uh, I didn't enjoy how the jumping felt. I will say... The story seems really cool. I do enjoy that Ratchet and Clank is are pretty much Rocket Raccoon and Groot. Um, turn it to eleven. Well, but like, but like PG Maybe not turn versions. Up to 11. They're like, yeah, they're, like they're the sweet versions of them. Yes, and there's no language in this movie. I mean, yeah. in this game. Uh, I do want to watch the movie that the game is based on, okay. and the movie is based on the game. I just want to watch the movie. Cause I didn't that's... know there was a movie. That's crazy. Yes, there's a movie that released alongside this, and hmm. the game is based on the movie, but the movie is based on the original video games. Cool. Entertainment, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just couldn't get, like, the shooting felt weird. Um, the, mm. like, way you did combat in that game, I just didn't enjoy. I'm sure it's a wonderful game. Sam, I think you also mentioned you had been playing it yeah. and you have previous experience with ratchet and clank games this is like my first one yeah so i i've liked ratchet and clank before i don't think i've ever completed one or played a bunch but it's fun to play with friends just like local co-op i've done that before and it's just like a simple fun game so when cody was telling me that it was not good he didn't like the controls i was like huh i wonder if there's something bad about this one or if it's just cody not liking stuff so i decided to play it a little bit i didn't play very much but i got into it and it's pretty much like any other ratchet and clank game it, it plays the same and uh it's awesome it's fun it's just like <laughs> i don't know you just have to be i was on easy mode so i mean you don't have to aim a whole lot <laughs> to take out enemies um which i like it's just like casual fun it's got good animation um the sets and characters are a lot of fun. There are some really cool worlds that show up in Ratchet and Clank games. Um, they have really cool weapons. Like like I said, I didn't get far in this one, so I don't know what weapons are going to make a reappearance. But in like the past, some of them have been like, you can get this gun that you shoot enemies and it converts them into fun animals like sheep and stuff that just hop around. So it's a lot of fun. Um, so I think it's a really good addition to PS Plus, um, definitely for kids, also for adults who, you know, ha like fun stuff and don't take, I don't know, Cody, I don't, I, just, I, I hate understand. fun stuff. He fun stuff fun. is the worst. It is. So, uh, um, so yeah, it's a typical Ratchet and Clank game, but I think it's fun. I think it'd still be fun for us to like team up and do some online stuff together in it with people. With some geek heart gamers, if anyone were so inclined. I don't know. I didn't know it co-op. I assume that it has online co-op. Um, I know it would it would have local. Uh, previous previous Ratchet and Clank games have. Yeah. I could be completely wrong here because I didn't look into <laughs> this one. I just assumed it would be like the others. Um, so we'll see if that is true or not. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Apparently, we need to uh, fact check things better before the next episode. And uh, as a caveat to this, um, so the other free PS Plus game, or one of the free PS Plus games, is Bloodborne. A um, little story about Bloodborne. It's the only video game I ever asked for a refund for. Like, a whole out was just like, no, this is not worth my time. <laughs> um, so now it's free. 
I've heard some great things. Uh, Brian Altano from Podcast Beyond really talked about it, how much he loved it. He said, take at your own speed. So I downloaded Bloodborne last night, and I am looking forward to trying it again. I'm probably going to have a guide up to help me out. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's no shame in that. I wholeheartedly support that. I mean, yeah, no shame in the guides. It's great. Thank God for guides. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to getting into blood porn. So, yeah. Right. And Sam will always advocate. Download your PS Plus games. Or just not download them. Add them to your library. Because mm-hmm. you never know when you're going to want to play them. Know. You never know. Your niece could really want to play that Ratchet and Clank game. You don't know. Well, it's, it it's on there. So, she yes. ever does. Um, I'll try to play Bloodborne too. I've got it downloaded because... Um... Why not? I like to try new there things. There is multiplayer in that. Oh my so. god. Oh my god. I read the article about the multiplayer because I got excited. I'm like, ooh, title, multiplayer in Bloodborne. I was like, ooh, let's click on this and see what it's about because that would help me out a lot. It sounds horrible, Cody. You have to <laughs> you have to earn some stuff in order to be able to call for help. But it's hard to earn this stuff, I think. And then also you spend the stuff on other stuff in the game. So you have to balance, like, do you want to use it to call for help or do you want to spend it on whatever else? Then once you've called for help, maybe somebody's going to come help you. But also maybe somebody's just going to come kill you because that's something they can do. Other people can just jump in your game and kill you. Like, whoa, what the fuck, man? It sounds horrible. You know, Bloodborne doesn't sound as fun anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe not the multiplayer. We'll see what happens. I we'll don't know. Just stick to the single player. Um, and I think maybe, I don't remember. I think, again, I didn't do good fact checking, but I thought in the article I read, it was like, you should probably be up to like level 10 before you try to do multiplayer help. And I'm like, what? Like, I'd like some help when I'm lower level. So Yeah, it's a little weird. I don't know. Hmm. Um, Alejandro's been playing it a lot, I saw. So we should ask him awesome. for advice. I don't know. I'm going to say, maybe next week we'll report back in with our Bloodborne findings. You'll find out if I've thrown my controller through the screen door. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. So we've got that to look forward to. Um, all right. We, we had a special task. We had some homework that we decided to take on this week. Um, we've heard a lot of people talking about Florence, the new mobile game, um, and how fantastic it is, how it was moving, how it was great. I was like, oh my god, this game will probably make me cry, but I like crying in games. It'll be great. Let's play it. So as soon as it came out on Android, which is this last Wednesday, um, we both downloaded it, and we gave it a go, and we haven't talked about it. We were going to wait and share our thoughts on the podcast. So, Cody quick what did you what did you think of it um so i didn't get to play it my god so... cody are you <laughs> no i'm just fucking with you okay. i'm just fucking with oh, you <laughs> oh, okay um in all honesty <laughs> you can see people get in trouble when uh, they don't do their homework on this podcast yeah. um so i think we should go like baseline thoughts Mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about like how we really what we enjoyed yeah i don't think we'll do spoilers because it's just coming to android and you know want to give people time to play it i mean the basic plot i think people know i don't think it's spoilers there's not very much you can spoil good point yeah um so baseline thoughts i really enjoyed the game um liked a lot of the mini games they give you there were times where I feel like I was doing stuff and there was no reason for me to be doing it, but I understand it was part of the narrative. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did end up liking it. Uh, overall, love the game, uh, as we'll get into, caused me to sit down and really think about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been in a relationship for four years now, and I've been in past relationships uh that went on for a number of years so a lot of thoughts about this game (laughs) came to fruition okay um so sam what did you think of florence overall i felt pretty meh (laughs) wow i did not expect this i I was like man sam's gonna love this game no no i was just like well okay that's 
Um, and you and I will have vastly different uh, perspectives on this. Um, it's like you said, you've been in a long-term relationship for quite a while. I haven't been in a relationship in years, and I'm pretty happy about that. So, um, so I think we have different viewpoints when we see a relationship portrayed in a game like this. Um, I don't know. Do you want to just go ahead and... Um, yeah, so the basic plot of Florence is you're following a character named Florence Yao. Uh, at least that's how I assume her last name is pronounced. It could be Yo or Yao, I don't know. Yao, Yo. Um, uh, kind of follows how, like, she's got a... She's used to the regular routine of her life, and then she meets Krish, uh, a boy who plays the cello. I believe that's what that oh was. Oh my god, can I can I interject though? The one thing yes. that I loved so much was this music in the game. Yes. Listening to the cello Very. music. I love cello music. So yeah, same. that started playing and I was just like, oh god, I'm just gonna listen to this. Like the little button popped up where you could continue. I'm like, no, I'm just gonna listen to this for a while longer. It was so good. Like I could yeah. I could listen to that for hours. So yeah, yeah, the cello music was very good. Um they hit it off, they're in a relationship. Um, they go through things that people in relationships go through, fights, moving in, you know, things are getting serious. And then one day, something happens. Uh, and they're not together. And from there, Florence has to figure out what she's doing with her life. And I think it was very impactful, uh, for me at least. Um, to see what she decided to do with her life after we getting out of a relationship. Um, so like I said, I've been in, in a relationship for four years with my girlfriend, Rachel. Uh, love her to death. We get in fights. It's part of being in a relationship. Um, Florence really, like, I don't want to say showed me that, like, wow, like, what would I do without my girlfriend? But, like, it just kind of hit home that, like, for me, Rachel is Rachel made me a better person when we got together four years ago. Like for her, I was a doormat. People walked all over me. I didn't really like put up a fight about anything. And I'm definitely a very different person now. Um, and like I've been there, I've been, been in bad breakups. So like I related to that part of Florence. Um, I was in a relationship before Rachel and things happen and you can't change the things that happen. And I think ultimately I'm a better person ever since then. And so I related to Florence's character that way. Uh, this game is, a, I think less about love and more about growth and how Florence was very unhappy and without Chris Florence would not have found what made her happy, which is painting. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think seeing the evolution of the character of Florence in this 30 minute phone game where you do some mini games, but you pretty much are following Florence's life and you really see how she's grown. I don't really think you can do it. Florence too. But <laughs> I would love to see what's next for Florence. I think mm -hmm. this is a really cool game. Um, I think it definitely deserves all the hype it got. Enough talking about me, though, Sam. How did you feel? Um. So I enjoyed, like, the way the game had, like, the mini games where you do different things. I think the interactive parts were a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of... All right, I just said that I hate puzzles, but there were like actual puzzles with puzzle pieces for some of the stuff in this game. And the way they did it and the way that evolved throughout the game was very interesting and it made sense for the game and it was pretty cool. Um, I, I took some notes on this as well. Uh, oh, okay. Let's just, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay. Um, the animation style, the drawing style, it's fine. But like the way Whoa, what? No, no, hold on. Okay, no, it was good. It's great. It was except beautiful. I it had was I had one major problem, okay? The way that 
Krish's facial and body hair was portrayed. I did not care for that at all. In fact, it was very disturbing for me. Um, which, I mean, it's just normal. It's just like these little lines. Um, it looks like a freaking cactus. Um, and He's a hairy man. He's a hairy man. And I mean, I, get, I just would have liked it represented a better way. I guess, I don't know. There was a scene where you see him for the first time in shorts. And as soon as it flipped to that scene, like I did a little up. So I was like, whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> saw his hairy legs, I was like, whoa, uh, like, that's just, so that was distracting for me. I didn't care for it. Um, Sam is not a fan of uh, leg hair, apparently. In general, I'm not a fan of beards or body hair. Like, you're, oh, you've well. got some little bit, it's okay, but like, big old bushy lumberjack beards, oh god, no. Um, really just, uh, I'd, I prefer not. It's fine, <laughs> it's fine, I don't like it. Um, so... I thought Florence was kind of mean to her mom. And I was like, why does she got to be mean to her mom? I mean, I guess that's the way a lot of people are. Moms are nosy, but I was just like, meh. Um, my parents aren't nosy like that, so I don't have a reason to be mean to them. So that was... I didn't think... The, the, some of the responses you could give you... to your mom were really mean. Some of them... And I was just like, Come but. On. It's like a personal choice thing. Um, I chose them, to be like... None of them like, were very nice. There, were, there was like non-committal and there was mean. But if you... Okay, we're doing some spoilers okay. for Florence. It's a 30-minute game. If you don't want to hear them, <laughs> pause the show right now. Yeah. Go play Florence for 30 minutes and come back. Yeah. In the game, you see that Florence's mother is very strict on her being good at education. Okay. Um... Which obviously led to her job, I believe, as an accountant. That's true. Is pretty okay. much what she now was doing. Saying now, yeah. So I think, and I think there's a small bit of resentment there, That's um, true. because Florence obviously liked drawing, but her mom was like, "No, focus yeah. on your schooling." Um, and I mean, yes, some of the responses were a little rude. And I, you can see later on, like, if Florence had just, like, shown her mom, like, no, this is what I'm passionate about, yeah. her mom fully supported her. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I can see, but I do think some of the responses are kind of deserved at points. Okay. But, yeah. Okay, continue. Well, I'm sorry and, for interrupting. And part of it, too, is, like, you never really see what people are saying. Um, there will be, like, conversation bubbles with no words in them. So you just, you know, it's just like a general representation. But, like, I love words. Um, I love dialogue in books, in movies, in games. I love words. I love words. So, <laughs> like, the, when they have their first fight at the grocery store, like, you don't, you don't know what they're fighting about. But in my mind, I'm like, okay, they're fighting about granola. Krish wants the organic granola. Florence is like, let's just buy the cheap stuff. What? And then they get into this big fight, and I'm like, just making up stuff like that in my head. So that's what, like... I personally was like, oh, she wants the bl the purple grapes, and he wants the green grapes. <laughs> I mean... So I'm glad we went two different ways there. This is serious stuff. I mean, this is how relationship fights happen. Um, but yeah, so I just... I didn't get super invested in the characters. Um, I just, I don't know. Like, there are different things. Like, in Horizon Zero Dawn, you collect these viewpoints and they have just a text story that goes with them that is in no way related to characters in the game that you're playing as or anything like that. It's just like a, this little story about what was happening at the end of the world. And just... The way it was written was so good that it touched me and like I have sobbed like I've never sobbed in a game before because it was just so moving because the way they describe stuff, just the way the words work, uh, it gets to me. So like that's something that can get to me, but like this where I just don't feel, I don't know, I just didn't, I just didn't get close to these characters so I didn't have much empathy for them. Um, and I mean it felt like a pretty standard story like this is an everyday occurrence for people you find someone you fall in love doesn't work out you move on um and i'm like i'm 
I'm so fiercely independent, um, which is why I'm single. I don't, <laughs> I don't like spending significant amounts of time with other people. I don't like sharing my life with other people. I don't like making a commitment for like to hang out next week. So I'm like, I don't know. What if I don't want to hang out next week? So it's just, I'm just weird. I'm super weird. And that's my own thing. But I think that's all my hangups are probably what went into me just, you know, not feeling much for this game. So Yeah. And that's completely understandable. Like, I think I'm the very kind of kind of opposite in some ways like there's definitely times where i'm like i don't want to make plans next week like i don't know maybe <laughs> i want to stay in um i'm gonna get real deep here mm -hmm. so after my previous relationship i got super depressed because like it's very weird going from that was like a three-year relationship i was in before um after you go from every day waking up and hearing someone say i love you to not having that you i got depressed from that mm -hmm. um didn't really know what i was gonna do with my life uh so seeing florence's character she was sad obviously but she turned it around and f that fueled her art even more mm -hmm. uh was kind of like a oh well i should have done that like i should not have just been hung up on being sad uh at the time i should have like tried to and like it was like my freshman semester of college, so like I should have just focused on my studies, and but that didn't happen to me. So yeah. seeing Florence do this was kind of like a cool thing because I was like, oh, I can relate to this. Um. See, so yeah, I, I I can agree that like you as a person are very independent, like you said. So you're not going to have the same connections to these characters that like I would. Mm -hmm. Um. I will say, I think one of my biggest hangouts was the, some of the mini games just felt pointless. Like when you are, it gets to the part where the bike crashes mm -hmm. and you have to like rotate these like, almost like knobs, like you're doing a tuning thing and you're getting the pictures yes, to like pissed me off. unblur. Yes. That took me a solid 10 minutes. Like, that was a long it's part. It's just like, well, and the first one's were actually really easy, but if you don't know what you're doing, then you're not doing it right, because that one did take a really long time to figure it yeah. out. And then once you figured it out, it's like, oh, that's fine. But it was just like, what? It was really weird, that one was. Um, and then when they get into, like, the big argument that mm -hmm. sparks the eventual breakup. Mm -hmm. Even even the fight in the supermarket, actually. Like, I really wanted to see what would happen if I just stopped arguing like if i stopped mm -hmm. matching but i feel like if i didn't like i was gonna like mess up like it'd be like oh no go start over mm -hmm. um i don't think you can start over i think you just it ends quicker maybe yeah uh but i just felt like some of those the mini games just weren't like very good for the moments they were doing uh but i mean overall i really enjoyed the story uh okay. it's three dollars so yeah, i mean you're not dollars. But real quick, one mini game that I thought was pretty brilliant was, I guess, is it like after the breakup when she's walking down and like there's like a ghost image of Krish? Krish? Oh, her. yes. And like, I was like, because I was just trying to get through stuff. I'm like, all right, let's go. So I kept like banging on the screen to try to like get her to walk faster to go. But like the more you interact on the screen, it more makes her stay back and hang out with Krish. And you eventually have to stop pushing and just let go to let her walk yeah, away. Yeah, I thought that was... And that was like, whoa, that was deep. That was really very cool. Very great metaphor for like yes. moving on. Yeah, um, yeah. They did that really That mini well. game was really good. And I really liked when, I guess they're like, as they're breaking up, there's the picture of them that's ripped to shreds mm -hmm. and you have to like match it up and sh the picture of them hugging. But like, if you're not fast enough matching it up, the, it keeps like uh splitting apart. Yes. It's, it and it's moves. really just showing like it, it hit, it hit really hard. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Like this is what happens when people break up. Like it's, it was a very refreshing. Cause like, I don't play a lot of romance games. Like yeah. I don't even know there is a lot of romance <laughs> games. It's so, like, that's another reason I think I like this game is you don't get to play romance games very often. Mm -hmm. Like, so it was just refreshing to see this. Um, but yeah. I mean, overall, in my opinion, I love Florence. Like I said, I was saying it's only $3. It's 
it's on both ios and android mm-hmm. if you're even the slightest bit interested in it definitely give it a shot won't regret it you should listen to, i mean you should play it just for the music at least if nothing else because it's so good I yeah the music that. is very good yeah and i personally really love the art style um oh my god chris is like hair. Hair. chris is like hair is not that bad it's uh, horrible like all of his all of his hair oh, just, oh. there's a lot of cute moments in that game too like uh when you first see florence with chris's family like it's just like mm-hmm. oh mm-hmm. that's really sweet because like in the world we live in sometimes that wouldn't be accepted and yeah. it's nice to see in a video game but yeah one thing that made me very upset was when you were cleaning Krish's room and you were putting stuff away and you end up having to put away this action figure and replace it with a plant and i was like Fuck yeah you. man he can leave his action figure out oh come on my one big hang up with this game <laughs> so he's moving in mm-hmm. and you have to like the mini game is pretty much you need to like pick what Chris is putting in Florence's apartment. Mm-hmm. So I tried to do stuff 50 50. So like, I was like, yeah, cool. Expecting the game to like remember what I picked. Later in the game, when he's moving out, just random shit. They just fucking random stuff. shit everywhere. I, know. I was like, pissed. I the was action like... figure? I didn't pick the action figure. Well, and then that's like, your, that's your fault. You made a mistake in that. It was just correct. Well, I went for the cool little yeah. elephant. Mm-hmm. You could figure. have both. I mean, it's... okay, good point. Um, but yeah, I was packing up. I'm like, his coffee pot is not supposed to be out. I said no to that coffee pot. What is he doing? But that's why we broke up because he started putting his stuff out after I said no. I mean, very solid point. Like he was just putting shit wherever he wanted. Uh, but yeah, that's my big hang up was that was like, oh, come on. You could have had a little bit of consistency there. Like, remember what I picked? Come on. <laughs> um, but overall, I love the game. It was a lot of fun. Definitely give it a shot definitely it's it's worth it's worth a playthrough and especially at three dollars it's uh you know not everyone is as heartless as i am so <laughs> give it a go. all right um cody i feel like we've been going for quite a while um so let's try to i don't know i'd say let's speed it up but i don't know that we will it's fine hey, um this is our show it's our show we will do what we want it's gonna be fine um i have real exciting news actually you know what i've got two exciting news things First news, we just found out today, uh, the podcast is now on Spotify. So that was exciting. We got the email today. Like, we'd signed up to get that done, like, a month ago, like, before this even launched. Um, So that finally happened. So that's cool. One more way people can listen to us. And then the second exciting bit of news for us, uh, we got our first listener question, which uh, this one kind of came out of the blue. Um, My friend Barbie texted me the other day, and she said... Her son, Corbin, just asked a good question that I thought you would like to give your thoughts on. If you could be in any video game or make any video game real life, what would it be? His was Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, which he would like to know if you own, by the way. I I do not own that. Cody, do you own that? It looks... I I watched a trailer. It looks kind of cool, but I don't have it. Um, Barbie said hers would be Super Mario 2... And then for good measure, we got her husband Jason's way in, and that was Leisure Suit Larry, which I had never heard of, so Barbie had to tell me about it. Apparently, there's lots of boobs in it, so there ah. you go. Yeah. Um, Classic. So yeah, so we got this question. I was like, this is this is a really good question. It deserves a lot of thought, but I had to go follow up. I'm like, okay, but is this permanent or just temporary? And so she said we could answer it both ways. Uh, one could be permanent, one could be temporary, like you, you're stuck there until you beat the game and then you get to leave. So we can have two scenarios here. So Cody, do you have answers for this? Um, yeah, I think a temporary mm-hmm. world I'd like to live in is the world of Halo, at least up until Halo 3. Okay. Because I think being a Spartan just sounds super badass. Mm -hmm. And they get lots of cool weapons. Okay. A world I wouldn't mind living in pretty much forever. I guess I gotta go with the world of Horizon Zero Dawn. Okay. Because, like, that whole, like, tribe-ish thing going on Mm -hmm. with the Nora seems pretty cool. Yeah. 
Um, a lot of badass ladies there. Mm-hmm. In a world where there's robot dinosaurs that I could possibly ride, I'm in. Oh, yes, that's true. So yeah, those would be my two based on the scenarios. I feel like... I haven't played much Halo, so I don't know about that, but I feel like Horizon Zero Dawn is a good answer. I'd considered that one. I'd also considered Kingdoms of Amalur, um, Reckoning, but, you know, then I was thinking about it. I'm like, if I'm stuck here permanently, you know, I really like air conditioning and I really like running water. Um, So if I was stuck in one of those worlds, I'd be like, eh, I just, you know, mm, don't know about it. So, oh, points. so I decided my permanent world uh, would be the world of destiny because it's sci-fi. There's spaceships. You get to fly around. There's aliens. Um, there, I mean, ideally, I would be a guardian. If I was there and I didn't get to be a guardian, I would be pissed. But, I mean, guardians get some magical powers. You can constantly get revived if you die, so it's fine. It's there's lots of high technology there, so I assume they have such things as air conditioning and running water. So I think it'd be fine, you know. Um, and pretty good one. Yeah. Then for my temporary one, um, now this one, like sometimes you know you're making a bad decision, but you're just gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Uh, so my temporary one would be the world of Resident Evil 4. Okay? Oh, Jesus, God. I know, I know, I know. It's like, that's that's horrible. I'd get there and probably hate it. Um, but like, I love like haunted house stuff. Um, I love horror. I have dreams that like most people would probably, it would be nightmares for them. But for me, it's like fun. It's action. Like, okay, this is the zombie apocalypse. Let's go do stuff. Um so I mean, and it's temporary. It's just until I beat the game. So I think it would be okay uh, if I die. I would just you know reload myself from a previous save at the typewriter, and I'd get to keep going. Um, so I mean, I don't know. Like I said, probably a bad decision, but I still think it would be fun to try. I don't know. I'd like to go to the Camp Crystal Lake on Friday the Thirteenth. Oh my god oh my that's god. equivalent Are to you your resident saying? evil comment well i would be the good guy in resident evil i'd be killing the zombies you would be a mass murderer oh god, of innocent okay people. okay well, well no. i meant like a counselor um oh okay okay sure. but i'm out of shape so that'd be a terrible idea jason would murder me in a heartbeat <laughs> <laughs> all right well you know hey i mean you just need a good team to help you escape. and then No chads. You wouldn't have to go back. Need no chads. chads on my team. <laughs> um, La Chapa for life, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I am almost like La Chapa, so. There you go. All right. Um, so we have some news items. Like, real quick, Twitch is giving away free games. They've been doing this for a while now it's a lot more, of free games. yeah it's more like a concentrated effort every month there's going to be multiple games um this month uh they've got oxen free mr shifty super hot shadow tactics and candle keep tomb of annihilation i've heard of at least two of those games and they're really good so that's awesome um next month there's tales from the borderlands steam world dig 2 kingsway tokyo 42 and dub wars I've heard of three of those games. So, I mean, there's really cool stuff that they're getting. Um, if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime, you just have to go set it up, and then you have free games every month that you can play. I think this is really cool. I think Amazon is, you know, opening things up to a lot of people who wouldn't consider themselves gamers previously. But it's like, hey, you got free games? Come check it out. Check out Twitch while you're here. It's, it's a great idea for them. I think it's fantastic. Cody, do you have any comments? Uh, yeah, and a lot of the games are pretty basic. So, like you can run them on like if even if your PC yes. is in high end. Yeah. So like I think Oxen Free is pretty like mm-hmm. not it's not taxing on your computer. So if you have a laptop like I do, definitely give it a shot. Um, I want to check out Mr. Shifty because I feel like I've heard good things about that game. Yeah. Well, yeah, hey, I now was... you can. Yeah, now I can. It's amazing. Like I was checking it out earlier, and I was like, it was like because there's a little like crown icon. And usually there's like one or two notifications there. And it was like, hey, you got six notifications, dude. And I was like, oh. 
of all okay. the games. Yes, it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, they've for been Amazon Twitch. They were doing a thing about um, some indie games that like you could vote on what you were most interested in. They've said that like all of those games will eventually be included in the Twitch Prime games. So that's really cool. Yeah. So many games. Okay. Quick news. Um, Geralt, I hope I'm saying that right, from Witcher 3, which is sad because I've played Witcher 3. I just didn't play a lot and I don't remember how to say his name. Um, he's going to be in Soul Calibur 6. So that's exciting. Cody's excited about Soul Calibur 6. Like you should have heard his freak out at, when we were watching the Game Awards and they announced that. It was insane. I love Soul Calibur so much. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> Terrible at fighting games. Don't care. That's fine. Nostalgia. So that's exciting. Um, but that led us to a question of who would you like to see added to Soul Calibur? If you could add any character from anything. This is a really tough question because Soul Calibur is predominantly like weapon based. Like most, like it makes mm -hmm. sense for Geralt to be there because he has the swords. Um, I said Geralt. You just said Geralt. Which one is it, Cody? Go, I don't go know. Geralt. Oh my go god. Geralt. Geralt. No, this, Geralt. Just have easy the dude from Witcher. For your characters. <laughs> um, so this is really tough because it's like what 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 Bugam character really uses weapons a lot. I guess you could do Aloy and like she could use her bow, like how Hawkeye will sometimes use his yeah. bow. Like as a, like a melee weapon, but then she can also shoot arrows from time to time. Um, you... This is like ultimate like crazy, but like Reinhardt with his hammer would be yes. so badass. Yes. Makes no sense, but would be badass. Well, I don't think it has to make sense. Isn't that the point? Good point. And like, I think it was Soul Calibur three or four that it came out on three different systems xbox playstation and i forget which nintendo one it was but each one had a different character and so like xbox got spawn okay. from image comics yes nintendo got link and i want to say playstation got haichi from tekken okay and like two of those made sense like haichi from tekken and link from and then you got the spawn, and you were like, <laughs> Sky's Xbox was just scraping the barrel, like, give us something, man. Aww. Like, oh, well, I thought spawn would be cool. I think he was pretty cool, but like, it's just like, it just doesn't fit. I don't it's really fun. put spawn in Xbox. Yeah. Like, Tekken makes sense, okay. though. I feel like Tekken is mainly I see what a you're saying. Um, You could have put like something from Crackdown, something from Halo, Gears of War, anything. Yeah, but probably not as popular. Most people might not recognize those characters as sure. quickly as they would spawn. I would really like Kratos in Soul Calibur. Oh, okay. I feel like he, yeah. like it just makes sense. Like either old school Kratos or the new Dad of War. Um, yeah. This makes sense. He always has the weapon. So yeah, those would be who I would suggest for Soul Calibur. Okay, mine, I just sent you... A little message in discord because you might not be familiar with the person i'm gonna say um so i am picking the executioner from resident oh, evil 5 so okay. this is the big guy he's got this bag on his head with nails in it and he has this huge like sledgehammer axe thing and he's fantastic he was in both the video game resident evil 5 and then he made an appearance in the movie um, I don't remember which movie it was for number wise, but it was the one where they're in the prison and uh, Mila Jovovich oh. and Ali Larder are fighting him in like the prison showers and like they're hitting pipes. So there's water flying everywhere. I've seen that movie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so him, he's fantastic. I would, I'd fight as him. So That'd I wouldn't want to face him. So. Hmm? Have you ever played Marvel vs. Capcom games? No. Because you can play as Nemesis from oh. Resident Evil. So I feel like that'd be your jam. Now like, he has a rocket launcher. And yeah, like, oh, I mean, sick. he's cool. And it's cool that there's a Resident Evil character. But, I mean, he's not as cool as this guy. So. Yeah, this guy does look pretty badass. This guy is so. fucking badass. He's awesome. I like him. So, 
All right. Um, our last bit of news, which is kind of a lot of news all mixed together. Um, it's, it's about Fortnite. There's a lot happening <laughs> with Fortnite right now. So Drake, a popular musician, just... Uh, you may know him from Degrassi. Oh, okay. The best seasons. Fantastic. Thank you, because I'm so old that I'm like, I know he's famous. I don't, I don't really know. He was on a stream playing Fortnite with Ninja, a popular streamer. Um, and then they had two other guys with them as well. And it was breaking records on Twitch because so many people were watching this stream. Um, which, that's awesome. That's cool. Um, Real fast. Yes. want to give major props to Ninja because that dude has been killing it for years. I used to watch when he was a pro Halo player. Um, and now he's moved on to Fortnite and he's doing great, great stuff. Like pretty much when they announced like the, with Twitch prime, you get some Fortnite skins mm -hmm. and he was like, Oh, if you guys get Twitch prime, you can use it on me. And then also get the stuff he's hitting. Like he's almost, almost, I think at 200,000 Twitch subscribers, mm -hmm. which is, would be a new record. Um, I actually think he's currently has the record for the most around yeah. like, he has like 180,000 or something uh so big ups to ninja for killing it and also i went ahead and i watched a little bit of the stream just to see like what the fuss was about um and i mean the guys like their interactions it was fine i was just like hey that's just people playing i guess but watching ninja play Holy crap, that guy good. is unbelievable. He's shooting yeah. things, he's like building, jumping around. It is, it, it blew me away. He is very talented. Um, so this so. is what I like to do. If I'm going to play Fortnite, I go watch a little bit of Ninja streaming or some <laughs> of his videos on YouTube. Yeah. And then I play. Because then I get in the mindset and I'm like, I am Ninja. And like, I pull off crazy plays. Yes. That's how I do it. Oh my um, god. It was, it was He's really impressive. good. Um. But yeah, so he had celebrities come play with him. So that gave me the idea. So Cody, if you could fill out your Fortnite squad with three celebrities, who would it be? All right. I think number one, okay. I got to go Chris Evans. Okay. My Captain America. Yes. I mean, he's he's my Captain America as well. I'd say he's everyone's Captain America. But... I agree. He's specifically mine. Okay. Okay. Um, That's great. That's great. I mean, some people like the 1970 movies. It's fine. Uh, Chris Evans. Uh, I cannot know. I don't remember her name. But I think Egret from Game of Thrones. Oh my god, yes. I believe her name is Leslie Rose. Or Rose Leslie, perhaps. I yes, I think, you, I think it's Rose Leslie. Okay. I think she would kill it. Yes. Um, She just seems like a badass and would probably like to play video games. Yeah. And oh my god, did you not plan this all like... out? We had this question for a yeah. while. Come mm -hmm. on, Cody. Did That's why this. I told Go you on. early what the question would be. <laughs> um, I feel like we need a hype man. I need someone who could keep me hype at all times. So I'm going to want to pick a comedian. Okay. So I think I'm going to go with Chris Rock because I love his comedy. All right. So I need a hype man. Sounds like a well-rounded team. Yeah. All right. Um, so what about you? Mine. So I guess kind of filling that comedian fun role, I'm going to go with Kristen Bell. Um, she, She's most recently on The Good Place on NBC. She's... For some reason, when you said Kristen Bell, I thought of Kristen Stewart from Twilight. And oh, I was like, yeah, yeah. the fun role. Yeah. yeah. Now. okay sorry continue all right Kristen bell is hilarious one thing i have to say if you have never seen this there was a time when she was on ellen and the ellen talk show and she told this story about her birthday and how her husband dax like rented a sloth for her to oh, come her. play with for okay. the afternoon and yeah hearing her recount this story and then they have video footage of it happening and like how excited she was about this sloth is just like the greatest thing ever everyone should go watch that it is fantastic so she seems like a ton of fun i want her on the team um filling the real badass slot i'm gonna pick michelle rodriguez 
because like everything she does is just super badass. Um, and then rounding out the team, I'm going to go with Maisie Williams, who is Arya Stark from Game of Thrones, because I mean, she's just Smart. like tiny and deadly, and I think she would be a ton of fun as well. So those are my picks. Yeah. Sounds like a good team. So if any of those people are listening and you want to play Fortnite with us, just go ahead and reach out. It'll be great. We're at Geek Heart Games on Twitter. Let's do it. Please, Chris Evans, be my friend. I mean, um, that's not weird at all. It's, it's fine. No, Perfect. it wasn't, Sam. I'm sorry. I want to be friends with my Captain America. To be fair, I mean, we all love Chris Evans. He is fantastic. Um, I mean, I liked him more before the whole beard situation happened. Oh, get out of here. The beard's majestic. Ugh, but it's fine. It's fine. He's a very good looking man. Okay. Um, oh my god, I forgot. We had a question earlier. Fuck. Do you want to go back to the question earlier? Um, after Florence, I was supposed to ask um, if you had a favorite video game romance. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. But now I'm breaking stuff up more because there was more Fortnite news. <clears throat> Okay. Just real quick about this Fortnite, okay? So, uh, Fortnite Mobile is out on iOS right now. Mixed reviews. And then, just either yesterday or today, PUBG Mobile has come to Android in Canada. So, there's so much going on with mobile games right now. Um, it's exciting. I can't wait for it to be, like, wide release so we can try it out and get back to you on how it is. But, okay, let's go back to those video game romances just real quick you should have thought of it cody did you think about this one? Oh my god he's looking at me i don't think um, about it video game ro- okay. i'm like so here's the thing is like I... all right let's There's just make no this easy. Game i'm gonna make it like... real easy for you cody do you remember that one time or maybe like those 20 times i told you you should play butterfly soup I and know. you never played it no do you remember that because then you'd have I, an answer to this question yeah um no okay so butterfly soup is fantastic um it's these it's the story of four asian american uh teenagers uh learning about their sexuality there are two of them that fall in love and it is so beautiful and i love it so much and Cody, you should play the game. It might make you cry. It's so good. <laughs> and it's funny as hell. It is so funny as well. These girls are hilarious. They like to prank each other. It's just all around a good game. And, um, I mean, if you wanted to, you know, A, listen to things your friend Sam says, then you'd play it. So. I'll get to run to that this year. I promise. I mean, you've told me previously that you were going to play it, and then you didn't play it. So we're just going to... We're going to... All right, that's it. We're done. We're good. That's fine. I'll let it go. We're ending the episode now because Cody hasn't played it. It's fine. No, I'm just kidding. Whoa, hold on. I got some romances. Did you, did you come up with some? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, let's hear it. Um, I'm not very big on romance in video games, but... um, Real deep cut here. <laughs> I think this is the love story between Jaina Proudmore and Arthas Menethil in World of Warcraft is really deep. Um, so pretty much backstory for you, Sam, because I don't, I don't you've never played yeah, World of Warcraft. I have no idea. Um, Are they both human? Arthas, yes, they're both human. Okay. Well, one is human. Okay. For a bit. Um, both human. Uh, so Arthas and Jaina meet. They're hitting it off. He's going to be a prince and a king one day. She wants to be a mage. So she goes to study mage stuff. He's preparing to be the king. They fall in love. Um, this thing called the Scourge comes. That's pretty much zombies. Uh, and Arthas will do anything to get rid of the Scourge. Even sell his soul, pretty much. And he becomes what is known as the Lich King. Kills his father. Like you do. Is 100% evil at this point. Uh, goes and like chills out for a couple thousand this <laughs> year. Not a thousand, like a hundred years or something. Not right. even a hundred. Less than a hundred. Just goes and chills out. Um, besides, alright, it's my time to shine. 
uh, summons as the Lich King, he controls the Scourge. So oh. summons all the undead. Has a super badass undead dragon. Uh, and like in the background, like Jaina's like, oh no, Arthas, my love. Um, and then after you defeat Arthas and you free his soul, and he's like, I can finally eternally rest. Mm-hmm. Most badass cutscene in the world. Uh, there's a side quest you can do. Mm-hmm. And you find out that Arthas, even when he became the Lich King, he kept a locket that Jaina gave him. Mm-hmm. And she has like this like beautiful line of dialogue where she's like, Arthas, you still remembered me. I knew that you were still in there. And it's really sweet. Um, and I love Arthas, the character. Like, yeah. he's such a cool character. Um, but yeah, that's really it. Like, I'm not very big on romance in video games. Like, there's not always a ton of it. So, there's also, yeah, there's always not, there's not always a ton of it. Yeah. I guess Florence and Krish for a second there was one of my favorites. In the... Um, okay. Good for you. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. You're real supportive of Florence. <laughs> To each their own. It's fine. All right. Is there anything else we need to talk about? Or are we ready to wrap this thing up? Um, s- small section of Cody's eSport Corner. Okay. Uh, one, LA Gladiators, killing it. One of my favorite teams outside of LA Valiant and Houston Outlaws. Uh, two, Dallas Fuel. They just let go at XQC. Um, he did some fucked up shit. We don't support it. But there's some very shady shit going on in the league. Like, the caster team said that Dallas Fuel kind of need to amputate him. And he responded to that comment. Yeah, And that got, he got in trouble odd. for that. And it's like, all right, you need to be like 50-50. Like, casters can't be saying shit and not expecting that's people to say some fact. Yeah, the casters need to be disciplined as well. Because that's not okay to talk yeah, that like way it should about be, the they team. They should be treated equally in that. Yeah. Um, Wish the best for XQC. Hopefully he grows and becomes a better person. Maybe he can come back eventually. If he gets his shit together. LA Valiant. Dear God. There's a character, There's a guy named Kareev. He was a healer. Mm-hmm. All stage one. And then they were like, hey man. We got another healer. You can play DPS. You don't need Kareev playing DPS all the damn time. You have some of the best DPS on the team that you're letting Kareev play over. I feel like that's their shortcoming. Is like they're letting Kareev play too much. No offense to Kareev. Great player. Yeah. They're all great players. That's all I got. Okay. Coach I, Sport Corner over. I watched some, uh, but kind of like here and there. I don't like it. I find it difficult to watch um, when you're doing it not live, when you're trying to watch the replays of stuff yeah just like trying to you have to go to the twitch archives and it's just it's not the most user friendly so i have trouble getting through a whole a whole team segment worth of stuff um but i always enjoy it when i watch it um i really i've kind of wanted to start rooting for the shanghai dragons because they sign gagori even though she's not playing yet um, oh um yeah that's another update she's coming the end oh. of march and her first game will be like the beginning of April. Like That's I think awesome. it's the first weekend of April. And their first match is against Dallas Fuel, who hasn't been doing so well. So maybe oh, we'll see Shanghai we get a win. Yes, because I mean, they've been having a real rough time. I've watched a few of their matches and it was just kind of heartbreaking. I'm like, oh man. Just yeah. I want them to I want them to have a shot, you know. And so. they just lost one of their best, like one of their best uh, DPS players, just left because he's having some baby mama drama. Oh um, no! Oh, that's so, horrible. well, you know, they're gonna get don't some decide new you're gonna leave your kid and his and girlfriends and go to America. Apparently, yeah, <laughs> probably doesn't end well. No, I would not think so. Not a good video game romance there. No, so. but yeah, so. But hopefully there's good things on the horizon for them. So I'll be definitely right. wanting to tune in for, for that once she gets here. Um, anything else, Cody? Um, this will be coming out after it's happened, but you can probably go back and still like donate and watch this, the archives of the stream. Um, but our friend Stefan over at Gamers Giving Charity. Oh my God, I don't, a... I don't know if it's Stefan or Steven, how it's pronounced. We need to ask him. 
could be pronounced either way. Good point. Very solid point. Um, our friends over at Gamers Giving Charity <laughs> did a 24-hour live stream this past weekend because uh, you guys will be hearing this on Monday. Uh, they're raising money for a school in, I want to say, Kenya? That's what I was thinking. I don't quite remember. We'll have to check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Kenya. Um, they're raising money for a school. Definitely go donate. I plan on donating um, and watching a little bit of the stream. So we'll have more talk about next week about that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like, yeah, I mean, I think we've episode. covered a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was worried we wouldn't have enough to talk about tonight, but I don't think that was a problem. So, <laughs> all right, real quick housekeeping. Uh, you can always email us at contact at geekheartgames.com. And like you saw, we got our first listener question tonight. We would love to have more of those. Those are a lot of fun. We love answering questions. So send them our way. They can be video game related. They can be non-video game related. But we like to have fun. So keep that in mind. Uh, on Twitter and Facebook, we're at Geek Heart Games. Uh, you can watch our videos at geekheartgames.com slash YouTube. We've got two episodes of our new, se new season of Two Guardians up. And we're having a ton of fun with that. I've got some random videos up. Cody's got Monster Hunter video coming out soon. Actually, it might be out by the time this happens. It'll be so. out. Okay. So, All right. Go watch that. Um, and then, once again, we would love for you guys to come join our Discord. That's at geekheartgames.com slash Discord. Uh, Cody, where can they reach you? You can reach me on Twitter at comicbookcody. And I'm at S-K-S-U-V-A-K. -K. So thank you so much for everyone who's tuning in. Cody, take it away. We're just two geeks who heart games. Do 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 do. Yeah, that's how you do an outro. I mean, it was fine. Either either way was fine. It's good. It's good. It's great. <laughs> Let's just do the whole podcast like this where we blink very rapidly the whole time. Yeah, it's great. kind of weird. but It's very weird. <laughs> no one will notice. They'll be like, do you guys blink a lot in that, <laughs> that new video? Like, what's happening, guys? Like, we think you have a video glitch. It just showed you blinking the whole time. <laughs>